Today's video is going to have a lot of lore involving dragons, so go ahead and sit back because this one is going to be very interesting. In case you aren't entirely up to date on the history of the Seven Sovereigns, there was once a point before the very existence of the Divine itself that life was once ruled by immensely powerful elemental dragons. These legendary creatures were known as none other than the Seven Sovereigns, and were composed of pure solid elemental energy, all of which belonging to their very own respective element. This time period would go on to be known as the Old World, and would be a point in Genshin's history that was very very different than it is seen today, as these powerful beings would claim seven different regions under their own rule, and would live as superiors over another species known today as Vishops. And in case you aren't familiar with them, Vishops appear to be very dragon-like in nature, and while they are much more scarce today than they were all those years ago, they were actually at one point the most common race in all of the old world with their biology being purely based around raw elemental energy, much like the Seven Sovereigns. All of these fascinating creatures that I have spoke of here have all been born from an entirely different realm of existence, where it is said they have came from the realm of light, or otherwise known as the realm of elements. This domain is known to be the home of all ancient beings born out of elemental energy, and would play a key role in the creation of the world that we live in today as the legendary entity known as the Primordial Being would inevitably be the one to show up and put an end to the Seven Sovereigns, and would then go on to slay and conquer this prehistoric realm for the next 40 years. This would go on to be known as the 40 Year Long War, which would ultimately lead to the Primordial Being being victorious, with most of the bishops being slaughtered and turned to fleeing into the oceans in fear for their very own safety. After the war, the primordial being would go on to design and create the very earth that we live in today, as well as forging the very heavens above us in the sky. However, as I mentioned earlier, not all bishops were killed on that day. In fact, some of the seven sovereigns even submitted to the very will of the primordial being, and can still be found living in today's world, with Apep being a prime example of their existence. But what happened to those that fled beneath the nation's oceans? But first things first, I gotta give a proper intro. Hello everyone, I'm Sky Samurai, your guide in the vast world of Odd, and today we're taking a look into the immensely fascinating world of the Seven Sovereigns, as well as taking a look into the main point of today's theory video being centered around as none other than Kokomi, and how she may very well have ancient ties within her that could lead to her having an immense level of power that she may possibly have no idea that she even has. But getting back on track, bishops would flee into the oceans, and while they have originally thought to have died off, it becomes clear to us that they are still very much alive, as we can find ones such as Bolt Eaters and Rhyme Biters surviving in the now ancient land of Encanamia. However, you might be surprised to know that the bishops here are actually not pure elemental beings. Instead, they are actually some sort of evolved forms of hybrids that have seen their elemental powers change over the very many many years that they have lived down here. And due to this change in their evolutionary state, the once dominant Hydro Bishops are gone. Like, entirely. The reason why this might be such a big deal is the sheer fact that Bishops in their purest form are supposed to later evolve into becoming powerful dragons. However, due to them being tainted by other elements and moving on to becoming cryo and electro variants, this renders the chance of a powerful hydro dragon ever returning to be impossible. Yet, the people of Watatsumi Island have something deep within their genetic codes that might be painting a very different picture. There was a time that Encanamia was actually above the surface. However, after the Archon War, this nation would then collapse into the ocean, where it's believed that the people who resided here would simply go on to die off. Yet, they were far more resistant than you would have believed them to be, as the descendants of the Encanamia people are still with us to this very day, and it's greatly believed that this underwater city is the very birthplace of the current inhabitants of Watatsumi Island. There are those that claim that the Seven Sovereigns will one day return to our modern world, and that they are indeed slowly coming back into our very existence. However, for that to happen, the Dragon of Water would need a vessel of pure elemental energy in order to be reincarnated. 
Yet the people of Encanemia speak of an ancient prophecy that holds an answer to this question, stating that the dragon of water would very well not return in the body of a dragon at all, but instead it would take on the body of a pure elemental vessel, something that has slowly been deciphered over time that this very vessel itself would none other be a human. Okay Samurai, that's cool and all, but what does any of this have to do with Kokomi Sensei? Well, it's best that you are sitting down for this one because there's a lot of amazing details that I have just completely slept on for so long. To start things off, take a moment to just observe where she has came from. The Akanameans have a long history with dragons. In fact, it was the ancient dragon Orobashi who gifted them their home of Watatsumi Island in the first place and was the center of their worship all the way up until he was murdered by Raiden Shogun. Orobashi has taught the civilization everything that they know today, from farming to smithing, and granting vast amounts of knowledge onto them. It's not far-fetched to say that the source of this legendary ancient prophecy could have been revealed by Orobashi himself as well as that the people here had a very close connection with hydro energy, considering that they were forced to live underwater just like the bishops had before them. Which, at least in my eyes, doesn't make it sound too far-fetched that a descendant of this island could indeed be the pure vessel revealed to us. Next is how Kokomi simply has not truly had her full story told to us just yet. And if you ask me, her story was cut painfully short during the Archon questline. And considering that Raiden Shogun was the one that had killed her people's god, it makes sense that Kokomi herself, being the leader of the strong rebellion against her, possibly catching the attention of the Dragon of Water. Next is her constellation sign, and at first glance it appears to just be a sleeping dragon inside of an egg or within an ocean wave. However, the true translation for her star constellation is indeed known as Sleeping Dragoness. Could this truly be Hoyo giving us a faint hint that the body of this dragon god could be laying dormant inside of her? And if this could well be the case, does she even know about this? Honestly, I wouldn't put it past poor Kokomi to not have any idea of what may be laying inside of her, as Kokomi has stated in the Secret Summer event that she is just a simple human, nothing special. Yet, even the very colors of her clothing seem to even resemble the fishships themselves. But, if all of this is true, what could this mean for the safety of Kokomi herself? How long could it be before we see this? Honestly, I'm not sure, and if this revelation is seen to be true, who knows exactly how all of this could be handled, and if Kokomi could even withstand the power of something great resonating from her. I feel we will get a better hint of this story, maybe sometime around Fontaine's questline, and that we may possibly see her reveal her true form when the time may come for her to stand against Celestia with us, but that is a very long time from now. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really want to hear all of your opinions down in the comments on this, as this is a huge topic. Do you guys actually believe that Kokomi is truly an ancient serpent? Or do you believe that she may simply just be a side character in the whole plotline for this? It's going to still be a while before we really know for sure, and all we can really do till then is really just theorize. Anyways everyone, I make all sorts of Genshin lore and theory crafting videos here on my channel, with plenty more arriving every single week. So if you liked today's video, please give me a like. And if you want to see what I'm up to next, make sure to subscribe, as we got plenty of Fontaine content to explore soon. Thank you all for getting us to 500 subscribers, and also make sure to keep a lookout for our Discord information dropping later this week. And finally, thank you for watching, and as always, Till next time, Samurai.